Hello guys, welcome back to our virtual English lesson. Today we're going to start the second semester and we're going to study two units, unit 8 and 9. All right, so let's get started. A to B English class, unit 8. We are going to talk about technology, science fiction. Are you into technology? What do you know about the most modern things, devices, electronics in technology? Let's check some. What can you recognize about these pictures involving technology? So let's do the exercise here about the photo. Let's check which sentence match to each photo, right? Number one, the facial recognition device doesn't know who I am again, so I can't use my GPS. Number two, and I can see better too, thanks to the active contact lenses that I got at the same time. Number three, it sends this information to the surveillance camera in the kitchen, and now the smart refrigerator has locked its doors. You see? Number four. I hope there are smart vending machines not broken again. I'm dying for something to eat. Number five. Why are the voice-activated speakers always playing old Justin Bieber songs? And number six. Oh, I miss the good old days when I could simply press a button on the remote and decide what to watch. So number one letter, B. Take a look at the picture. The guy is using the facial recognition to use his cell phone to identify he is the owner, right? What about you? Do you use the facial recognition in any system? Number two. Active contact lenses, letter A, right? Look at picture A, the contact lenses, right? What about number three? Number three, letter D, the surveillance camera. What is the meaning of surveillance? Surveillance means security, so it is a security camera. Do you use a security camera? Do you use a surveillance camera in your house? Is there a surveillance camera in your school? Let's see the picture. So take a look. Number three letter D, the camera, right? Do you think it's safe? So, do you think these technological device helps people to be safer by having their surveillance cameras around? Number four, letter F, the smart vending machine. So, what is a vending machine? It is a machine. What is machine? It means machina, right? So, it is a technological service that people can insert the money, the coin, or the credit card in order to get something, to buy any product, right? Number five, the voice-activated speakers is letter C. Let's check the picture. Take a look at photo letter C. The girl is using her voice to give a command to any machine. We can have this in computers, in our cell phones, sometimes to listen to music, you say the name of the song, so you can say, play, play something romantic, and then the machine plays what you ask, and the girl is complaining that the voice activated system here only plays Justin Bieber old songs. Maybe she's not in the mood to listen to Justin Bieber old songs, right? What about you? 
what do you use your voice to activate, to open or to turn on something in your house? The last one, number six, letter E. The person here is talking about the old remote control that we have used for a long time, right? The person is complaining about the good old days. And the person could simply press a button on the remote and decide what to watch. So which of the technology items do you use in your house? Or the ones that you never use? How many of them do you have at home? Take a look at the example. I have facial recognition on my phone. Oh, really? I don't. I prefer to use my fingerprint. What is fingerprint? Remember that we call impressão digital. So, some people like to use the fingerprint to turn on the computer, to enter the password, Take a look at this. We don't use feel a need, feel a necessity for something. The word that we can substitute this idea is miss. You say, I miss my old phone. We use the verb miss to talk about something that you feel the necessity about that because you don't use that anymore. Or maybe you have had any problems about it, you see? So the person here says, Eu sinto falta, I miss my old phone, you see? Now, in this activity, you're going to insert the sentences that we have just read about technological products from the photos, right? You're going to insert them here in this journal. So, let's pay attention and let's listen and complete by inserting the sentences in each of the relations here, right? Nine a.m. Thursday's finally here after a relatively busy working week. So why on earth did the home entertainment system decide it should wake me up at nine? Why are the voice-activated speakers always playing old Justin Bieber songs? I specifically requested Mozart. So the answer for letter A is number five. Why are the voice activated speakers always playing old Justin Bieber songs? You see, the person here says that she requested Mozart, but she has no idea why the technological system here is playing Justin Bieber instead of Mozart. You see the problem? Technology has problems, a lot of problems, you see? Let's go ahead. Listen to letter B. Nine thirty a.m. Smart bathroom seems worried about my health. Apparently, I've gained two pounds in the past week. So here's what it does: it sends this information to the surveillance camera in the kitchen, and now the smart refrigerator has locked its doors. No breakfast for me today, thanks to the bathroom fridge conspiracy. How about that?
you see, letter B, number three. They're talking about this person here has gained two pounds in the past week. And now what happens? What it does? Number, number three, it sends this information to the surveillance camera, to the security camera in the kitchen, and now the smart refrigerator has locked this door. You see, now the person is on a diet as an obligation because the refrigerator that is smart, that involves technology, has locked its door so nobody can open the refrigerator door because it is locked. Locked means trancada, right? So no breakfast, nothing. And the bathroom fridge conspiracy, you see? So that's a technological problem. Ten a.m. The kitchen appliances are still refusing to cooperate, so I'm on my way to get a breakfast burrito from the store now. Yes, fast food for breakfast, of all things. I hope their smart vending machine's not broken again. I'm dying for something to eat. I never thought I'd say this, but sometimes I miss human attendance and their inefficiency. The guy here is complaining about a problem that is very common to see. Vending machines with technological problems. They get broken, maybe. So let us see is number four. The guy says, I hope their smart vending machine is not broken again. So the vending machine was broken. And the person here is saying he's dying for something to eat. Remember, the refrigerator is not cooperating. Yeah. All right. The kitchen appliances. Appliance is another name for device, electronics products that we have in our house. You see? So, and he's talking about he misses something very important. In his opinion, the human attendance. Most of the vending machines, you insert the coin, remember? And you don't talk to anyone. You just buy what you want and the machine gives you what you want. You see? There is no communication with a human person. The voice is electronic sometimes, right? So, letter C, number four. Let's go ahead. Letter D, listen. Eleven AM. I get into the car. The facial recognition device doesn't know who I am again, so I can't use my GPS. That's the third time this week. Could it be the two extra pounds? I guess I have no choice but to answer the same old security questions it asks me. You see, this is another technological problem that happens a lot. They don't recognize the facial of the client here, right? He wants to use his car, but the car doesn't recognize his facial recognition, right? So, he says, number one, the facial recognition device doesn't know who I am again, so... More than once, more than one time, 
having problems with this facial recognition device. So he can't use the GPS, the Google Positioning System, that you can find the place that you want to go to. All right? So number one in letter D. What about at 2 p.m.? What was the next problem the person here is complaining? Listen. 2 p.m. After three hours stuck in the car trying to prove that I'm not an imposter, I get home, sit down, and tell the TV I want to watch soccer. Guess what? It looks like it has decided that I'm in the mood for classical ballet today. Oh, I miss the good old days when I could simply press a button on the remote and decide what to watch. The guy is not satisfied with technology at all. You see, guys? What is another problem that he's talking about involving technology at home? He said that he got it stuck in the car. What is stuck in the car? He was there without moving. He was stopped for hours. Three hours stuck in the car. He was there in the car without moving, right? So, he was trying to answer the security questions in the car, and when he got home, he wanted to relax, he wanted to watch soccer. The TV has decided that he's in the mood for classical ballet to relax, you see? So he says for letter E number six that he misses the good old days when he could simply press the button on the remote control and decide what to watch. Now the TV decides what he needs to watch to relax. All right. The last one here at 6 p.m. Let's listen to it. Six PM I'm having a great time at my brother's birthday party, especially with the sound cancellation earplugs I bought last week. What a fantastic device! It makes everything sound much nicer. And I can see better too, thanks to the active contact lenses that I got at the same time. Now the guy seems to be a little happier. He said that he's having a great time at his brother's birthday party, especially with the sound cancellation earplugs he bought last week. You see? He says that it's a fantastic device. Remember, device is similar to appliance, that is similar to a machine, that is similar to electronics. They are, in Portuguese, aparelhos, right? Instrumentos. And what happens to this? He says, it makes everything sound much nicer. So letter F number 2, he says, And I can see better too, thanks to the active contact lenses that I got at the same time. So, by using the active contact lenses, is something that makes him see better, right? That's the point.
Now let's check what do these pronouns that are underlined here refer to. Pay attention to the arrow that is connecting the pronoun to the noun the pronoun is referring to, right? In letter B, we have it that is underlined here, substituting smart bathroom, right? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead at 10 a.m. We have the pronoun there in the session. So, what does the pronoun there refer to? And at 11 a.m., the pronoun is it. What does it refer to? The next one here is. It again, but right now it makes everything sound much nicer. What does it refer to? So let's check the answers. So here are the answers. In letter B, it refers to the smart bathroom, right? The next one here in letter C, we're talking about their inefficient in the last part of the sentence. Their means the human. Attendance. There refers to the human attendance the person here misses. I miss human attendance and their inefficient, right? The next one we have it that it refers to car's face recognition device. Alright? So you're talking about the same old security questions it asks me. What does S you? It. What does it refer to? The car space recognition device. All right. That's what I'm substituting by the pronoun it. The facial recognition device of the car. Right. And next one in letter E. We have, guess what? It looks like it has decided that. What does it refer to? It refers to the TV. Remember, he tells the TV he wants to watch soccer, but the TV has decided that he's in the mood for classical ballet. All right? And the next one. And the last one, we have it. Again, but now it makes everything sound much nicer. What does it refer to? Now it refers to the device, to the sound cancellation earplugs. All right, that's what it refers. That's what it refers to. All right. Take a look at this activity now. We're talking about some technology items that were mentioned in text in letter A, exercise A. And right now, you're going to pay attention to the one that you would most like to have. Let's check here about the decision-making devices, voice-changing devices, identity-checking devices, self-driving cars, Self-locking appliances. Pay attention now to this activity. Which technology items are mentioned in the text in letter A? And which ones here you would most like to have in your home? Let's check. So number one, decision-making devices. Remember the TV that has decided the man needed to watch a ballet show instead of his favorite soccer game, right? In number two, voice changing devices. 
three identity checking advices for self-driving cars five self-locking appliances six house cleaning robots seven sleep monitoring cameras and eight conversation making robots which of these you would love you would appreciate a lot to have in your home so remember the ones that are mentioned in the text are number one decision making devices that we call aparelhos to tomar decisões like the tv remember and number three identity checking devices remember the car the guy had to answer some questions about security so he could check his identity there right and the last one here number five self-locking appliances so there are some appliances that we call aparelhos right the guy was complaining about being locked remember that so do you remember why the refrigerator has locked its door because the surveillance cameras identified that he was overweight so he needed a diet you see that's a locking appliances but it is he se tranca, right? The other voice changing devices, self driving cars, house cleaning robots, sleep monitoring cameras, and conversation making robots, they were not mentioned there in the text. But which one would you like the most? Sleeping monitoring cameras, checking the way you sleep or house cleaning robots i would love that i would relax while the robot cleans my house you see pay attention to the form of this vocabulary we use the verbs in the ing form to tell what the things do in number one we use the ing form of verbs to describe what things do example a money making scheme a fitness tracking watch so it is a watch that i can check the fitness tracking right and this machine this skin here makes money you see in number two we have the compound nouns so in the compound nouns the stress is usually on the first word and you say money making scheme so which one is stressed? The first word to identify that you make what? You make money. A money making. You see the stress? And number three, we use self when no one else is involved in operating a machine. Example, a self-updating program. The program that you can do that by yourself. Right? Take a look at the example. My first one is an English learning device. I'd love to become fluent automatically. How about you? What can you say about the, your favorite devices? Do you have any? Be careful with these mistakes. The most common mistakes involving the compounds now. In a wrong way, they say the bank uses money count machines. Is it correct to use count? No, we use I am G in the gerund. So you say the bank uses money counting machine. Remember, the compound now is the now plus the verb the ing. Another example: this oven is self-cleaning, not clean. You see, ing again. And the last one: you don't need to worry. This is a self-updating app not updated you see again we use the verb in the ing right after the noun right or the adjective so that you can say the compound noun is referring to what the machine does what that 
item does, right? Remember our last slide, we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of the technology here in the journal or at home in your life. Remember that we were talking about technology that has helped us in many things at home in our lives, but also it brings the negative side of using technology, the problems that technology can cause for the humanity in general. And we discussed about these questions here, that you showed your opinion about what do you think. And the last one, number three, asks your opinion about if you will live more and more like this in the future. Are we going to use more technological products? Take a look at the example. I think technology can make life more complicated, not easier. And the other person disagrees. The person says, no way, technology is progress. You see? What about your opinion? Do you agree that technology has more positive, more advantages than negative things, than disadvantages? And what problems do you face by using technology in your house? What about the humanity in general? Do you think technology has caused something bad to the humanity? Now, you're going to pay attention to some conversation. You're going to identify which picture represents each of the conversations, right? And then you're going to take a look at the pictures and tell me about the conversation that matched best, right? Listen. One. It's time to wake up. Would you like me to let you sleep a little longer? <sighs> yes. Are you sure? You do have a very busy day. I'll get up in five minutes. I'm going to turn on the coffee maker. Okay. Oh, no, wait. Don't turn on the coffee maker. It's broken. Oh, no. What a mess. Two. Jack, wash the dishes. I'm sorry, I can't. You forgot to charge me this morning. I'm running on economy mode, so I can save enough battery power to make the beds. No problem. Let me plug you in. Thank you. Oh, that feels nice. Three. It's way too cold in here. This is not good for your body. I'm going to turn up the thermostat. No way! I like it when it's cool. Turning up the thermostat in three, two, one second. Hey, what are you doing? Please turn the thermostat down. Turn it down! Four. Please look at the face detection device. I'm sorry, I can't recognize you. What do you mean? I can't recognize your face. Please look straight into the face sensor. I'm sorry, I still can't recognize you. Oh no, not again. You know what? I'm going to switch you off. Michael, you know you can't switch me off. You need to answer a few security questions. So, number one, letter, take a look at the pictures. Letter A, B, C, or D. Remember that the machine wakes the person up and then with the voice command, they say they're going to turn on the coffee machine. So, the picture that represents this conversation is letter 
Let a D take a look. You see? The problem here is the coffee machine is broken. What about number two? So number one, letter D. Number two. So let's check letter B. Number two. So number two, it talks about a machine that is not working well because the battery is almost dead. The battery is not functioning well because it needs to be recharged. Recharging Hekahiga. So picture letter B. The machine, the robot, can't wash the dishes because it is working in economical power, right? To save the energy. In picture letter C, the air conditioning identifies the weather is cool or not. So, they change the temperature and according to what the girl says, she likes when the weather is cool, but the machine changes anyway. That's another problem, right? So, number three, letter C. And the last one, number four. You see another technological problem. The guy here is having a problem with his facial recognition in his car. That's the problem. So, number four, letter A, right? Here are the answers. Number one, letter D. Number two, letter B. Number three, C. And four, A. And now, by listening to the audio script here, you're going to check which of these balloons represents, right? What is the guy saying to the machine? Or, and what does the machine say to the guy? All right? So let's check what do they speak here. What do they speak? What does the guy, what does the girl say to the machine? And what does the machine tell the guy and the girl? Let's check. We have letter A. I'll get up in five minutes. B. Let me plug you in. C. I'm going to switch you off. D. Please turn the thermostat down. Turn it down. Letter E. Don't turn on the coffee maker. And F. You know you can't switch me off. G. I'm going to turn on the copy maker. Letter H. I'm going to turn up the thermostat. And I. It's time to wake up. So, let's check the answers after the audio script you listen to, right? One. It's time to wake up. Would you like me to let you sleep a little longer? <sighs> yes. Are you sure? You do have a very busy day. I'll get up in five minutes. I'm going to turn on the coffee maker. Okay. Oh, no, wait. Don't turn on the coffee maker. It's broken. Oh, no. What a mess. Two. Jack, wash the dishes. I'm sorry, I can't. You forgot to charge me this morning. I'm running on economy mode, so I can save enough battery power to make the beds. No problem. Let me plug you in. Thank you. Oh, that feels nice. Three. It's way too cold in here. This is not good for your body. I'm going to turn up the thermostat. No way! I like it when it's cool. Turning up the thermostat in three, two, one second.
Hey, what are you doing? Please turn the thermostat down. Turn it down. Four. Please look at the face detection device. I'm sorry, I can't recognize you. What do you mean? I can't recognize your face. Please look straight into the face sensor. I'm sorry, I still can't recognize you. Oh no, not again. You know what? I'm going to switch you off. Michael, you know you can't switch me off. You need to answer a few security questions. So let's check the answer. A, number seven. B, number three. C, number one. D, number five. E, number nine. F, number two. G, number eight. H, number four. And I, number six. Let's check. So in letter A, what do they talk here about? Remember, they say, I'm going to switch you off, number one, letter C, and the machine, what does it say? You know you can't switch me off. So letter C and letter F for numbers one and two, right? In letter B, conversation, we have the robot with the guy. What does the guy say? Let me plug you in letter B, right? Number In picture letter C, we're going to check number four and five. The machine says, I'm going to turn off the thermostat. And the girl answers, please turn the thermostat down. Turn it down, you see? And the last one, letter D. We have numbers 6, 7, 8, and 9. Which does the machine tell the girl? The first time, the machine says, it's time to wake up, letter I. Number 6, letter I. And the girl answers, I'll get up in 5 minutes. Number 7, letter A. And the machine says, I'm going to turn on the coffee maker, letter G. And the girl desperately says, Don't turn on the coffee maker. So number nine, letter E, right? What can you see in all these sentences? We have some verbs. Get off, plug in, switch off, turn down, turn on. Switch off again, turn on again, turn off and wake up. What do these verbs have in common? Can you see? This verb structure is the same. We have the verb plus a preposition, get up, plug in, switch off, turn on, turn down. You see? turn up and wake up. All of these verbs have the same structure. It is a phrasal verb. What is a phrasal verb? A phrasal verb, it is when we have a verb plus a preposition or a verb plus an adverb or sometimes we have both. Verb plus the preposition and the adverb together. 
So we call that a phrasal verb, that it has different ideas, different meanings according to the preposition we are using. The verb turn, as we talked about that in life, in our last life, turn means vira, turn the page, turn the face, you see, virar a página, virar o rosto, turn the face, to the right. Uh, when we talk about turn on, it has a different idea. Turn off, a different meaning. Turn down, turn up. So, depending on the preposition we use with the verb, it has a different meaning, a different idea. Turn on means liga, turn off, desliga, turn up, to increase the volume of something. You see, turn up means aumentar. And the opposite, turn down means reduce. You see, reduce, diminuir. So, depending on the preposition or the adverb that we use together with the phrasal verb, they have different meanings. Let's study more about this. So, phrasal verbs. Example. The TV volume is really low. Can you turn it up? It's getting dark. Do you want me to switch on the light? When will you give back my bike? I'll give it back tomorrow. I just lost my glasses. Can you help me look for them? Man, turn up the volume. Woman, no, turn it down. Boy, give it back. It's mine. You see, a phrasal verb is a combination of a verb plus a particle. This particle can be a preposition or an adverb that usually has a different meaning to the original verb. For example, look. Look, focus your eyes in a particular direction. Look means olhar. When we use look for, the meaning is different. It means Try to find, look for means procurar. It has a different meaning, you see, from the original verb. Phrasal verbs are very common in informal, fluent speech and writing. Most phrasal verbs are separable. The object, noun, can go between the verb and the particle. That we call verbos separáveis, right? O objeto, o substantivo, ele pode vir entre o verbo e a partícula. I can say, she turned the light on, you see? Or, after the verb, she turned on the light, you see? A few are inseparable. Alguns são inseparáveis. Example, the object can only go after the particle. Example. Juan cared for his mother when she was sick. Cared for his mother. You don't say cared his mother for. No, it's wrong. You just use the noun after the verb and the preposition, not in the middle, not between. Because this verb, care for, is inseparable phrasal verb. You see? Turn on, remember? Turn on, you can use in the middle or in the end. Both are correct. You can say turn the light on or turn on the light. O objeto pode vir entre o verbo e a preposição ou depois, porque é um verbo separável, separable. But when the verb is inseparable, quando o verbo é inseparável, the only position for the noun is after the particle, sempre depois. Do verbo a preposição. To find out if a phrasal verb is inseparable, look it up in a dictionary. Então, a melhor forma de saber se eu uso o objeto desse verbo de forma separável ou inseparável é olhar e checar em dicionário, ok? So pay attention to this exercise and let's complete here the grammar box. We have the phrasal verbs get up, wake up, 
plug in, turn on, turn down, turn on, or switch on, turn off, or switch off. And the definition that you're going to check the meaning of each of these phrasal verbs from 1 to 7. So we have letter A to decrease, B to increase. Decrease, increase, right? Letter C, to stop a light or machine, and D, to connect to an electrical outlet. Outlet means tomada, okay? And letter E, to get out of bed, F, to start a light or machine, and letter D, to stop sleeping. You see? Let's check the answers. Let's do the exercise together. And in number two, you're going to circle the correct options in letter A, B, and C. The TV is too loud. Loud means alta, right? A TV is alta demais. The TV is too loud. What do you say? Turn down it or turn it down. Remember? And B, the lights are very bright in here. Turn them off or turn off them. And C. In phrasal verbs, the pronouns usually come after or between the verb and the particle. Remember, if I say turn on the light or turn off the light, you can say in the middle or in the end. But when we substitute these words, these nouns, by the pronoun, can you use the same way in the middle and after it? or just one of them. Let's check. Pay attention to the answers. Let's check. So here are the answers. Number one, the verb get up. It means letter E, to get out of bed. Number two, wake up. Letter G, to stop sleeping. You see the difference? Get up means levantar-se, sair da cama, get out of bed. Letter E. And wake up means when you open your eyes, you stop sleeping, parar de dormir, acordar. Get up, levantar, wake up, acordar, right? Both are phrasal verbs. The verb plus the preposition. Number three, plug in. It's letter D, to connect to an electrical outlet. Plug in means conectar, ligar, right? A uma tomada. Ok? Outlet. Turn up and turn down. What is the meaning of each of them? Up and down. Turn up and turn down. Number four, letter B, to increase. And number five, turn down. It is letter A, to decrease. Opposite. Ok? Up means para cima. Down means para baixo. Turn up to increase, aumentar. To increase the sound, to increase the volume. And turn down the opposite, to decrease. You see? To reduce, reduzir. Alright? And number seven, we have turn on, switch on. And the opposite, number seven, turn off, switch off. Six and seven. Turn on, turn off, switch on, switch off. Number six, letter F, to start a light or to start a machine. Da início, ok? Ligar. And number seven, letter C, to stop a light or machine. Parar de funcionar, desligar, ok? And number two, the correct answer here is turn it down. When we substitute the noun by the pronoun, you never use in the end, no. You never use after the verb, after the phrasal verb. You use in the middle, between the verb and the preposition. So you say, turn it down. In letter B, turn them off. Them is the pronoun substituting light. So you say, turn off the lights or turn the lights off. But when you substitute lights by the pronoun then, you can only use in the middle, never in the end.
right? The last one, let us see. The answer is between. The pronoun come between the verb and the particle. Vem sempre no meio, entre o verbo e a partícula, ok? That's the answer. Remember Michael in the car having serious problems with facial recognition? The system had a problem to recognize his face, right? So the car started to ask him some security questions. Remember that? And we have five words here. Hub, July, Canada, white t-shirt, and October. That are in the conversation between the machine and the Michael. So, what do they refer to? What is hub? What does July mean? And what about Canada, white t-shirt in October? What do they refer to? Let's pay attention to the audio script, listen to the conversation, and tell me, what do these words represent? Hub, July, Canada, white t-shirt in October. So listen to the security questions between the machine of the car and Michael. May I ask you a few security questions? Yes, I suppose so. What's your full name? Michael J. Huff. How do you spell Huff? H-U-F-F. -F. Correct. Are you American? No, I'm from Canada. When were you born? October 5th. Correct. This is unbelievable. How long have you had this vehicle? What? How long have you had this vehicle? Since June. Information mismatch. June, July, who cares? Just start the car. Please. Did you say July? Yes. Correct. Did you use this car on Tuesday? Yeah. What were you wearing? I... Can't remember what I was wearing. A white t-shirt, I think. Try again. Come on! Why are you doing this to me? You see the guy is having serious problem with the car system. You see? And let's check here the answer. Hub. Do you remember what does hub represent in the conversation? What about July? Canada? A white t-shirt in October? Let's check the answer. So we have number one, we have hub. That is Michael's surname. Surname equals to Last name. His name is Michael Huff, right? Number two, July is the month when Michael got his car. Number three, where Michael is from. He's from Canada. Four, a white t-shirt. It is about what Michael thinks he was wearing on Tuesday, but the car system refuses his answer and say it's brown, right? And the last one, number five, it's the month he was born in. He was born in October. All right? Remember these questions in the conversation between the machine and Michael? Number one, what's your full name? Number two, are you American? Three, may I ask you a few security questions? Four, why are you doing this to me? So we have... The intonation of these questions here going up or going down. In this activity, let's check about the intonation you give 
for these questions. Remember that the machine was asking these questions, security questions, to Michael. Question number one. What's your full name? Question number two. Are you American? Three. May I ask you a few security questions? Four. Why are you doing this to me? So, what is similar between question number one and question number four? Both are double H questions. With an interrogative pronoun. Number one, what? And number four, why? Every time that we have a double H question, starting with the interrogative pronoun, a question word, what, why, the emphasis is going down. So you say, what's your full name? Or why are you doing this to me? You see, you give more emphasis in the beginning of the questions because the information questions you are asking about is what is your full name and why are you doing this to me all right the emphasis is in the purpose of the question to get information what and why and questions number two and three they are confirmation questions they are yes no questions and both are Questions that we start with the verb. Every time that we start the questions using a verb, it is a yes, no question or confirmation question. And the intonation is in the end of the question. So you say, are you American? May I ask you a few security questions? You see the intonation you give? You go up. Ah in the end of the questions, right? When they are, yes, no questions. So let's... One. What's your full name? Two. Are you American? Three. May I ask you a few security questions? Four. Why are you doing this to me? So, remember, intonation usually goes up at the end of yes, no questions, and down at the end of double H questions, right? Don't forget about it. Now, let's pay attention to this. We have the cars questions here that you're going to create them and give the proper intonation. Remember, when we have double H questions, we give emphasis in the beginning of the question. And when we have yes, no questions, we give the emphasis, the intonation in the end of the question. So, let's pay attention to number one, what's your full name? And number two, how do you spell her? And three, are you American? Four. When were you born? Five. How long have you had this vehicle? Six. Did you use this car on Tuesday? Seven. What were you wearing? You see? Listen. Pay attention to the intonation. Remember, double H questions. You give emphasis, intonation, the beginning of the question, right? Yes, no questions. There are number three 
and number six here. The emphasis is in the end of the question. Listen. What's your full name? Two. How do you spell huff? Three. Are you American? Four. When were you born? Five. How long have you had this vehicle? Six. Did you use this car on Tuesday? Seven. What were you wearing? Activity letter D, you're going to create a conversation between a machine and you in a funny way. So create the funniest conversation you can. Imagine a problem, a situation, and try to be very funny and create a story about you and the machine. All right? We have some examples here. Good morning, surveillance camera. Did you have a busy night? Did you miss me? You see, the person is talking to the security camera. Create a story about any kind of machine, any kind of device, appliance that you have in your house in a funny way. Or, if you don't want to create a conversation, you can share your experience with technology. So you can tell me about what do you think of any devices, appliances, apps that speak. Do you agree that we have to talk to a machine to make it function? How many people in your house, in your family, like things like that? Do you use them in your home? Example. I love that I can talk to my phone and ask it questions. And the person said, I don't talk to my phone. That seems to be kind of crazy. Eh? But many people talk to machines. Do you share your experience? 